Let's talk about what all of this means with House Minority Whip Sandy Hoyer, Democrat of Maryland. Thanks for being here. Brett, good to be with you. Uh, you just heard the interview uh, with the Senate Majority Leader. Your reaction uh, to that? Well, of course, as I said in my statement that you read to him, uh, it was clear that they hadn't read through the bill uh, entirely and knew that it was going to be uh, consistent with Senate rules uh, because they wanted to pass it, as you know, tonight and send it to the president tomorrow. And his point was this happens. It, it happened with Obamacare. It happens with Democrat legislation. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, th it's somewhat embarrassing, though, and, and unexpected because uh, they said it was going to move right to the president. But in any event, you're right. Th th that's not the, the main issue. The main issue is this is a bad bill. It's a bad bill for our country. Uh, it's going to create great debt. Uh, and it's uh, perverse in the sense that it gives uh, some 83 percent of the uh, tax cuts to the wealthiest in America. Uh, Senator McConnell said was substantial tax cuts. Well, obviously, 17 percent of $1.5 trillion is a substantial sum of money. But uh, uh, when, you, when you see that uh, uh, the wealthiest in America get a huge tax cut, and the, the middle class not only doesn't get a huge tax cut, they get a minimal tax cut, and it is phased out uh, in about eight years. This is what uh, Congressman Williams said with Maria Bartiromo uh, uh -huh. today. Take a listen. I don't know what their alternative is. In the past, it's been to raise taxes. That has not worked. Uh, and I think the fact that if you're going to give people their money back instead of giving the federal government is a pretty good argument. So it's disappointing that they have made this politically. I mean, whenever you have no votes for something, that's a political vote. So basically, they're saying, where is the Democrat alternative? Where was it? And does, do you think that your constituents want tax reform in what some way, shape, or form? We're for tax reform. As a matter of fact, uh, President, was there ever a bill? Pre President Obama came before the Congress uh, three years ago and said, we need to bring the corporate tax rate down. Uh, Mr. Neal, who's our ranking member in the committee, wanted to participate. Ron Wyden wanted to participate. There was no intention to participate. This was done through a reconciliation process. Why was it done through a reconciliation process? Because they wanted to do it in a partisan way. There was no inclusion uh, of Democrats in this uh, process. Uh, and uh, frankly, when the senator says, uh, you know, we want to give tax cut, frankly, uh, we want to give uh, a tax cut as well. But the fact of the matter is we want to do so in a bipartisan way, as we did in 1986. And, Brett, it was paid for. We didn't create any new debt. That was Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill working together. We should have done that this time. It would have been a lot better bill for the country, and it wouldn't have skewed uh, the resources. 83 percent to the wealthiest Are you going to wave 17 percent for the working people. Will you waive the pay-as-you-go stipulation? Look, I think uh, I, I wrote a letter to say, don't count on uh, count on us for that. Uh, we're going to see what they're going to do. But what they're doing is uh, uh, in uh, this bill uh, is activating PAYGO. What was PAYGO for? PAYGO was to get to a balanced budget. PAYGO was to do what the Republicans always say they want to do, be fiscally responsible. So now what's the first thing they want to do after they pass a tax bill? Wave PAYGO. What does that do? It adds $25 billion, in fact, over $100 billion uh, to the, the deficit. Uh, so that uh, we're not we're not uh, necessarily signing on for that uh, at this point in time. We, we see what they do. We are approaching another fiscal cliff uh -huh. at the end of this week. What's your prediction on how that's going to go? Uh, the senator suggests that the majority leader suggests that there are conversations behind the scenes that he feels he's confident about, at least temporarily, to get to January. Well, frankly, those conversations may be going on in the Senate. I don't think they're going on in the House. Uh, so we really don't, uh, I think, have a sense of what they're doing. Uh, what we do know is that so much work that needs to be done that should have been done months ago, weeks ago, has not been done, and therefore we're coming up on uh, uh, d doing a chip bill, for instance, for children's health insurance a program where millions of children stand at risk of losing uh, their insurance. Nobody wants that to happen, uh, but we keep passing, and we pass this time a partisan uh, approach to that, uh, which uh, Democrats think hurts other health care uh, items that they wanted to cut, like uh, children's uh, uh, inoculations. So does the government shut down? 
Well, I, I hope the government, we don't want to shut down the government. We can't shut down the government. The only people that can shut down the government are the Republicans. We don't have the votes to shut down government, and we don't want government to shut well, down. But you have the votes to prevent it from being shut down. Uh, well, uh, if they vote uh, on their programs and uh, they've got 240 members, and uh, it won't make any difference how we vote. But, Congressman, you know this is the game we play. It's who, who is holding the ball at the end. Well, you the, know. the game we play, Brett, is that uh, for the last seven years, uh, since 2011, six years, they haven't been able to pass a fiscal bill. But they want to do, they want to act in a partisan fashion right up until they can't get the votes. Is and then there, they want our help. Is there a way to make this place bipartisan? Is there sure, a way to absolutely. make it work? Absolutely. Uh, and we, we've done that in the past. Uh, and they've done it in the past. John Boehner did it. We acted in a partisan, bipartisan basis with John Boehner on a number of items. The doc fix, you remember making sure the doctors were uh, compensated for Medicare. So we have worked in a bipartisan basis. We worked in a bipartisan basis to keep uh, uh, the government open. As a matter of fact, every time that it's kept open, it's kept open because of Democratic votes. One time, uh, the three leaders, Republican leaders, uh, wanted to keep the government open. They only got 84 of their members to vote with them. 87. They had about 250 members, 240 members. It was Democrats that kept the uh, government open. Overwhelmingly. So you're optimistic or pessimistic well, before I'm, Friday? I'm, uh, we haven't had a great show of uh, bipartisanship up to this point in time. Uh, but uh, I'm hopeful that we will, uh, they will reach across the aisle, we'll have discussions, and we will do the things that the American people need done. Congressman Hoyer, we appreciate okay. your time. Thanks, Brett. Thanks a lot.